So today we were looking at the long-term safety effects of um, recurrent ovarian cancer in the maintenance setting, and that was conducted um, via analyzing the NOVA trial, which is the long-term safety effects of niraparib thus far. So the trial is analyzing niraparib. It's a phase three um, randomized double-blind placebo-controlled study where they looked at patients with recurrent epithelial ovarian cancer, fallopian tube cancer, and primary peritoneal cancer who have um, obtained a complete or rather a partial response with a platinum-sensitive chemotherapy. Um, that trial was then broken out into a germ cell BRCA mutation versus non-germ cell BRCA mutation cohort, and that was a randomized to a two-to-one randomization to either niraparib or a placebo drug. Um, so we were looking at the safety today to see the effects over time. So in the NOVA trial, each patient was started off with a fixed dosing of 300 milligrams per day. The patients were, in the NOVA trial, were started off at a 300 milligram fixed dose daily. Um, dose modica modifications were made uh, due to adverse events. Um, and these dose modifications often took place within the first three months of the treatment. Um, and the efficacy of the drug actually didn't show any difference within the dose modifications. There were um, dose eliminations or exactly drug eliminations due to adverse offense as well um, at about 14.8% and 3.3% of that was due to thrombocytopenia. Um, so that was the most prevalent. But overall, um, the main focus of the study showed that niraparib, no matter whether a woman had a germ cell line uh, BRCA mutation or a hemologous recombination um, deficiency, that they did have significant progression-free survival. Um, and this also showed that the quality of life while they took this drug um, had no difference between whatever cohort they were in, even the placebo. So there was no change in or impairment in quality of life. Um, so therefore, especially with the maintenance therapy, it's crucial to see if patients can tolerate it long term without significant adverse effects. So this study or this follow-up of the NOVA trial was to look three and a half years out at um, the tolerance of, and the safety and the efficacy still of niraparib for those patients. The NOVA trial found that there was a significant progression-free survival um, over all cohorts, so meaning G BRCA mute patients as well as non-G BRCA mute patients. Patients who were in the long term were actually continuing on niraparib, 39% continued over one year and 18.8% continued over two years. Um, the main point with this too as well is the, the safety of these drugs. So these drugs do come with adverse effects. The most common is hematological effects and they, these were anemia, neutropenia, and thrombocytopenia with thrombocytopenia being the most prevalent. Um, the other sort of um, cohort of adverse effects were GI effects, which were nausea, um, vomiting, and diarrhea, with nausea being most prevalent. And then there were other sort of adverse effects that were more prominent, which were fatigue, insomnia, and hypertension. And fatigue was most prevalent out of that group. The main thing to focus on is that whether you were G BRCA mute or non-G BRCA mute, it, you experienced the same adverse effects. So that didn't change. Um, as well as another key point is that the adverse effects happened within the first three months. And during those first three months, dose reductions usually were made, um, treatment was individualized for the patient, and the adverse effects pretty much resolved and the, the drug was quite tolerable. So um, it's super important because if you're gonna have, it's great to have progression-free survival, but you wanna be able to live your life um, and have a great quality of life. And that's what this uh, data has reported over the three and a half years looking back into the NOVA trial. With PARP inhibitors, there's always a risk for MDS and AML. Um, however, this did happen. However, you know, it happened in the placebo group as well, um, and it was quite rare. So there are elevated LFTs as well as um, adverse effects in grade three or above um, renal issues. These usually happened right away, and they also were quite rare. Uh, but at the end of the day, the the main concern was the hematological effects. With dose reduction, um, it was quite tolerable and these resolved. Quality of life didn't 
mean or change at all between both cohorts and people who had the placebo, so that was completely stable. Um, and so therefore, you know, especially with the 39% of people on Neraparib for over a year and 18.8% over two years tolerating it quite well without progression of disease, um, it's, I think it's safe to say that um, this, this drug and the, this type of drug and a maintenance therapy is safe um, for recurrent ovarian case, cancer patients. So the take home message with this particular PARP inhibitor of Neraparib is that during the first three months, patients will experience adverse effects. They'll likely be hematological, um, anemia, neutropenia, thrombocytopenia. Like I said, the GI, there could be nausea, um, vomiting, diarrhea, and then the other ones that we saw, fatigue, insomnia, and hypertension. However, with dose holds, dose modifications, and supportive therapies for these um, adverse effects, you know, once after the first three months, these seem to resolve with these different, these specialized um, tweaks in dosing and tweaks in supportive therapies, which is huge. Because if we're showing progression-free survival and a tolerability of this drug for a significant amount of time, then those first three months, it's super important for nurses to be um, assistant with these patients as well as their, their entire care team to provide the supportive therapies um, to get through those first three months. Because if you can find the rice dosing, this could be quite significant, um, not impact their quality of life, and actually give them a longer time without have to, having to deal with their disease.